world news tonight. Resolution rejected. Deadlock deepens as Security Council rejects competing resolutions by US and Russia. Speaker elected. The US House of Representatives elect Republican Mike Johnson as the new House Speaker. On alert. Bangladesh bears the brunt of the cyclonic storm Hamoon as it makes landfall along the Cox Bazar and Chittagong coasts. Nights of the Jack. Thousands of illiberatedly carved Halloween pumpkins illuminated near Los Angeles. This is Adhaderana World News Tonight. Reporting from Colombo, here is Sanuvi Mudanayaka. A very good evening and you're joining us on World News this Thursday night. The U.S. House of Representatives elected Republican Mike Johnson, a conservative with little leadership experience, as its speaker after a turbulent three weeks. And Mike Johnson is a loyal ally of Donald Trump. This ends weeks of congressional paralysis and signaling a sharp tack of the right for Republicans in the lower chamber. In total, all 220 House Republicans in the chamber voted for Johnson yesterday afternoon and no Democrats backed his bid. Therefore, the Honorable Mike Johnson of the state of Louisiana, having received a majority of the votes cast, is duly elected Speaker of the House of Representatives. With 220 votes from his fellow Republicans on Wednesday, U.S. Representative Mike Johnson was elected as House Speaker, ending a three-week leadership vacuum that had left the chamber rudderless and unable to carry out any of its basic duties. After winning the Speaker's gavel, the 51-year-old said aid for Israel would be the chamber's first order of business. And we want our allies around the world to know that this body of lawmakers is reporting again to our duty stations. Our nation's greatest ally in the Middle East is under attack. The first bill that I'm going to bring to this floor in just a little while will be in support of our dear, dear friend Israel, and we're overdue in getting that done. A little-known conservative from Louisiana, Johnson will be the least experienced House Speaker in decades. He has supported legislation that tightens immigration and abortion restrictions, prohibits mask mandates on airplanes, and bars gender-related surgery and hormone treatment for transgender teens. But the conservative, who has the backing of former President Donald Trump, is most known as the author of an unsuccessful appeal by 126 House Republicans to get the Supreme Court to overturn the 2020 election results. After Johnson's win, President Joe Biden was asked if the Republicans' track record concerned him. During a break at his civil fraud trial in New York, Trump applauded Johnson's victory. He will be a great speaker of the House, and we were very happy to help known for a long time, he's a tremendous leader, a tremendous man, comes from a wonderful place, Louisiana. He is going to be, uh, he's going to make us all proud. In a letter to colleagues, Johnson vowed to advance overdue spending legislation and ensure that the U.S. government does not shut down when current funding expires on November 17th. And while he has broad support from his Republicans on funding for Israel, they are divided over further support for Ukraine. In the meanwhile, Donald Trump was fined $10,000 for a second-time gag order violation, barring him from disbargating court staff. This judge is a very partisan judge, with a person who's very partisan sitting alongside of him, perhaps even much more partisan than he is. It was that comment that cost former President Donald Trump $10,000 more at his civil fraud trial on Wednesday after the judge said it violated a gag order in the case for a second time. Trump was fined $5,000 last week for not taking down a post that disparaged a law clerk after Justice Arthur Engeron barred him from making comments attacking court staff. Engeron, surmising that Trump's comments outside the court referred to his clerk, called it a blatant violation of the gag order, and imposed the fine after Trump briefly took the witness stand. One of Trump's lawyers said the partisan person Trump had been referring to was not the law clerk, but Michael Cohen, the former president's one-time lawyer and fixer who is testifying against him in the trial. But the judge did not buy that argument and declined to reconsider the fine. Attack, attack, attack. That's the Trump way. Earlier, Michael Cohen underwent cross-examination during his second straight day of testimony in the case, 
in which Trump's family business is accused of unlawfully manipulating its financials to dupe lenders and insurers. Cohen, who hosts a political podcast and has written two books since cutting ties with Trump, acknowledged under questioning that he has a financial incentive to criticize his ex-boss, but defended his credibility. His testimony that Trump inflated the value of real estate assets could bolster the case against the former president, but Cohen's admitted record of deceit after having been convicted of tax fraud and perjury in 2018 could undermine his credibility before the judge, who alone will decide the outcome of the trial. Went to jail for lying, and this is their only witness. Trump has denied wrongdoing in the case and defended the valuations of his properties. He separately has pleaded not guilty in four criminal cases this year. Moving on to the road to the White House now. President Joe Biden's name will not appear on the New Hampshire Democratic presidential primary ballot as the state moves forward with an unsanctioned nominating contest in 2024. In a letter to New Hampshire Democratic Party Chair Ray Buckley, Biden campaign manager Julie Kravis Rodriguez wrote that while the president wished to participate in the primary, he was obligated to comply with the Democratic National Committee's presidential nominating calendar. Withholding Biden's name from the New Hampshire ballot caps a year-long effort by the DNC to reorder the 2024 early state lineup in which Iowa and New Hampshire lost their influential perches atop the calendar. New Hampshire, however, is moving forward with its first in the national primary, potentially triggering more sanctions against the state from the party leaders. Top Democrats in New Hampshire are expected to lead a write-in effort on behalf of Biden. Next, in neighbouring Bangladesh. According to the India Meteorological Department, cyclonic stone Hamun has made landfall in coastal Bangladesh and is expected to weaken into deep depression. The storm has wind speed of 80 to 90 km per hour, gusting up to 100 km per hour. Cyclonic stone Hamun over coastal Bangladesh has commenced the landfall process. Earlier this week, storm warning cage number two was mounted at Pamban's port in Ramaswam to warn fishermen about the severe cyclonic storm Hamun over the Bay of Bengal. Further, Odisha administration had put all urban local bodies on alert in view of the formation of cyclonic storm Hamun in the Bay of Bengal. Meanwhile, the severe cyclonic storm Ted over coastal Yemen weakened into a cyclonic storm. Light to moderate rainfall is likely at many places over Mizoram and Tripura for today. Light to moderate rainfall is likely at many places over Nagaland, Manipur and East Arunchal Pradesh this week as well. Fishermen are advised not to venture into the northeast of Boy of Bengal and along and off Bangladesh and North Myanmar coasts and adjoining areas of Northwest Bay of Bengal and East Central Bay of Bengal. Russia's efforts in the nuclear field continue to intensify, with more tests being conducted in the midst of a controversial de-ratification bill being passed in the parliament's upper house. Russia says these missile launches are part of a successful rehearsal for a massive retaliatory nuclear strike. That's how Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu characterized it to President Vladimir Putin in footage aired on Russian state TV. It's a show of force that coincides with Moscow moving quickly to revoke its ratification of a treaty banning nuclear tests. A de-ratification bill unanimously passed Russia's upper house of parliament on Wednesday. Putin will have the final sign-off. Russia has the world's largest nuclear arsenal and currently sees itself in an existential standoff with the West over Ukraine. Moscow says revoking the treaty's ratification will line it up with Washington's stance. The U.S. signed but has never ratified the same document. If the United States continues to take no steps to fulfill its obligations, then this agreement will remain a sham. Upper House Speaker Valentina Matvienko told lawmakers. 
While the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty has never formally come into force, it has made nuclear testing taboo. Russia carries out exercises to test its so-called nuclear triad from time to time. The U.S. also carries out regular drills. Arms control experts say a test by either side could spark a new arms race and trigger more tests from other countries. Moscow says it has no plans to start testing unless Washington does it first. We'll be back with more world news after this short commercial break. Welcome back. Russia and China vetoed a U.S. push for the United Nations Security Council to act on the Israel-Hamas conflict by calling for forces in fighting to allow humanitarian aid access, the protection of civilians and to stop to arming Hamas and other militants in the Gaza Strip. Russia failed for a second time to get the minimum amount of support needed for a U.N. Security Council resolution on the Israel-Gaza conflict deepening the Council's deadlock over any unified response to address the crisis. Earlier at the United Nations, Russia and China vetoed a U.S.-drafted Security Council resolution calling for pauses in hostilities to allow for food, water and medicine to be delivered to Palestinian civilians. Russia's rival proposal advocated a wider ceasefire but failed to win the minimum number of votes. Israel has resisted both, arguing that Hamas would only take advantage and create new threats to Gaza civilians. The similarly worded resolutions would have called for a humanitarian ceasefire or humanitarian pause to enable safe delivery of aid for desperate civilians. Both drafts condemned the attacks by Hamas on Israeli civilians on October 7 and urged action to address the worsening humanitarian crisis in the Gaza Strip. Key differences in the text included a specific mention in the U.S.-backed proposal of states' inherent right to self-defense and a call in the Russian-led one for the immediate cancellation by Israeli forces of the evacuation order for civilians to head into southern Gaza. The initial U.S. text shocked many diplomats with its bluntness in stating Israel has a right to defend itself and demanding Iran to stop exporting arms to militant groups. It did not include a call for humanitarian pauses for aid access, but it largely toned down the final text that was put to the vote. It was a rare move by the United States to suggest Security Council action. Washington has traditionally shielded its ally Israel at the world body. Ten members voted for the U.S. text, while the United Arab Emirates voted no and Brazil and Mozambique abstained. The UNSC can adopt a resolution only if at least nine of its 15 members, including the five permanent ones, vote in favour of it and no veto is used by one of those five. A shortage of favourable votes and a veto from the United States has kept resolutions from manifesting so far. Over in the United Kingdom, two of London's Metropolitan Police officers were dismissed from the force after a disciplinary panel concluded that they committed gross misconduct over the stop and search of two black athletes. Two London officers were fired Wednesday after being found guilty of gross misconduct over the stop and search of two black athletes outside their London home in July of 2020. British sprinter Bianca Williams and her partner, Portuguese 400-meter runner Ricardo dos Santos, were followed and then pulled over because officers said they were suspicious about how the vehicle was being driven. The allegations made by the police officers that I was guilty of bad driving, threatening violence and drugs were dishonest. Dos Santos spoke outside the courthouse after the verdict. If we can't trust in the police, to be honest, and accept when they have done um, done bad and um, stereotype of black people, what hope is there? The case has taken a big toll on our family and on our careers, but it's crucial that those people who have a voice use it and those people who don't um, suffer without being listened to. Both athletes were handcuffed while they in the car were searched for weapons or drugs after officers said they could smell cannabis. They were separated from their three-month-old son who was in the car, but nothing was found and no arrests were made. While two of the officers were dismissed, allegations against three others were not proven. Last month, government figures showed black individuals were four times as likely to be stopped as someone who was white. 
In other related news now, China launched a Shangzhou 17 manned spacecraft from the Keqiang Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. Three Chinese astronauts were selected for the mission to the China Space Station. The trio marks the youngest astronaut crew by average age since the launch of the China Space Station construction mission. It is also the first time the spacecraft team consists of one veteran from China's second batch of astronauts and two space rookies from the third batch of astronauts. China has one of the most active space programs in the world. With space launch capability provided by the Long March launch family and four space ports within its border, China conducts either the highest or the second highest number of orbital launches each year. It operates a satellite fleet consisting of a large number of communications, navigation, remote sensing and scientific research satellites. The scope of its activities has expanded from low Earth orbit to the Moon and Mars. China is one of the three countries alongside the United States and Russia with independent human space flight capability. Shenzhou 17 is the 30th flight mission of China's manned space program and the 12th manned mission of the program. The crew will stay in orbit for about six months. Major programs include China manned space program and Chinese lunar exploration program. In recent years, China has conducted several missions, including Chang'e 3, 4 and 5, as well as Tiangong 1 and Tiangong Space Station. Now to a landmark ruling in Japan. Japan's top court ruled that a legal clause requiring people to undergo sterilization surgery if they want to legally change their gender, as it is unconstitutional. Japan's top court has ruled that requiring people to undergo sterilization surgery if they want to legally change their gender is unconstitutional. The decision on Wednesday was welcomed by rights groups who had said the requirement was discriminatory and infringed upon human rights. But there was also disappointment as judges asked a lower court to deliberate on a separate clause concerning the appearance of the genitals. Japanese law states that people who want to change gender must present a diagnosis of gender dysphoria and meet five requirements, being at least 18 years old, unmarried, not having underage children, having genital organs that resemble those of the opposite gender and having no reproductive glands or ones that have permanently lost their function. The plaintiff's lawyers argued that the last two violate their client's constitutional right to pursue happiness and live without discrimination, and pose significant physical pain and financial burden to transgender people. The plaintiff, identified only as a transgender woman under the age of 50, had a statement read out by her lawyers. This decision was very unexpected and I'm very surprised. The case was filed because of the troubles I face, so I'm very disappointed that the change of gender could not be achieved through the deliberations in the Grand Court and the ruling has been postponed. I hope that this decision will help bring about a better future. While many countries have moved to repeal laws requiring surgery to legally change gender, Transgender rights remain a sensitive topic in socially conservative Japan. Welcome back. Hurricane Otis makes landfall in Mexico. For more on that story and more, let's stay here on the world for a minute. Hurricane Otis roared into Mexico as a Category 5 storm, with torrential rain and fierce winds battering the beach resort of Acapulco, before it quickly weakened into a Category 4 storm. According to US news media last night that nearly two dozen people were killed in mass shootings in Lewiston, Maine. And as authorities said, a person of interest was at large, armed and dangerous, warning people there to shelter in place. Sydney is reeling after a young woman was allegedly killed inside one of the city's most prestigious schools. 21-year-old Billy James was a water polo coach at St Andrews Cathedral School in CBD. The Sudanese Armed Forces and the Paramilitary Rapid Support Forces announced yesterday that their delegations had arrived in Saudi Arabia's port city Jeddah to resume to a new round of negotiations. San Diego Sea World announced yesterday Today, its first birth of an emperor penguin ship in over a decade. The baby penguin hatched about two weeks ago on SeaWorld's ground. That is all we have for you on World News tonight. 
Join us again tomorrow as we bring you updates from across the globe. If you miss any of today's programs, you can always rewatch by catching us on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash English. We're leaving you tonight in California, United States, as the Halloween Wonderland Knights of the Jack features everything carved into pumpkins from dinosaurs to SpongeBob SquarePants and portraits of Hollywood stars. Thank you for watching. Have a great night.